in, in our community. So it is a time for the leaders in the church who have received salvation, who trust and love God to come on in um, and get back to doing the work that we are all called to do. Amen. That is the great commission. That is what we've been asked to do um, because we believe. And so with that being said, we want to start doing that now heavily uh, so that people can know Christ because we do not know the hour or day that he comes. And we want to make sure that everybody gets to know Christ. Amen. Um, so the series, of course, is discipleship series. And we're going to use the, the mission of Mount Calvary Missionary uh, Baptist Church. Our mission is to know Christ better and to make Christ better known. And that is truly what discipleship is, really making you knowing who Christ is yourself and making Christ better known. Our foundational scripture, for those who are taking notes, our foundational scripture is coming from John chapter 4, verses 1 through 42. All right. For those who are online with us, um, we are going to be studying um, John 4 verses 1 through 42 for the remainder of these weeks as we talk about discipleship and our key verse for today our key verse for the day is John 4 uh, 10 John 4 and 10 all right so the objectives that we have coming up and I'm gonna have them put the scriptures on the board so everybody could follow along um, but the objectives for this discipleship series is uh, for the next couple of weeks we are going to discuss the encounter Jesus has with the Samaritan woman at the well to determine why we should disciple, what discipleship is, and how to disciple effectively. So for these next couple of weeks in John, we're going to talk about Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman and why and what discipleship, uh, what what discipleship is, how to disciple, and um, why we should do it. All right. The next objective uh, for these next couple of weeks, uh, uh, we all will become kingdom leaders at Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, developing our capacity to lead, okay? We're gonna become the uh, kingdom leaders. We all are gonna become kingdom leaders. We all are going to become kingdom leaders. We all are going to become kingdom leaders. That means everybody has to play their part. For those online, we all are going to become kingdom leaders. And we're going to become kingdom leaders to do what? To develop our capacity to lead others, to actively participate in the ministry, to uh, serve the body of Christ with our gifts while we are we're doing all it is while we are looking for the next shepherd of Malachi Missionary Baptist Church. I want to repeat that one more time. We all, those in this building, online, we are going to become kingdom leaders. That's what the series is about, becoming kingdom leaders so that we can develop our capacity to lead others, develop our ability to participate in ministry ourselves so that we can grow and share what we have known and to serve the body of Christ in this building and any other building outside this building, in the community, whatever the case may be. We're going to do all of that while we are searching for the next shepherd of Mount Calvary Missionary Better Church. Is that okay to do? Are we okay with that? All right, because listen here, the, the, the show don't stop. The ship keeps rolling. And we have all agreed that we're going to move forward. And so moving forward doesn't mean we sit here and complain and throw rocks and wait. Moving forward means we actively participate in building Mount Calvary, no, I'm sorry, building the body of Christ and presenting Mount Calvary as a place that people can come to receive Christ Jesus. And so we go all do that with all our gifts and until we get a shepherd and when that shepherd gets here. Amen. Okay. The last objective for this Bible series is we will measure ourselves to Christ and work on areas of growth through the word of God. So we all know we're not perfect. Is that an understood uh, uh, point about all of us? None of us in here perfect. So that means we have areas of growth. And we use that in corporate world to say, instead of saying weaknesses, we say areas of growth, right? Uh, so what, a place that you struggle in, and it might be studying, it might be prayer, it might be interpreting the scripture it might be dealing with conflict it might be loving it might be not allowing your biases to uh determine how you look at someone else 
These are areas that you have to grow in and you need Christ in order to do that. And so Mount Calvary is the hub for a, a select, for those who choose to be a body, a member of this church, for them to come receive Christ so that they can know Christ better and make Christ better known. So we all in here are going to learn how we can individually grow so that we can be great disciples for Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So I'm trying not to rush because I want to make sure we had time because it's a lot. And you know, I love Bible, I love Bible study. I man, an hour ain't enough. All right. I'm going to read John 4, verses 1 through 42. All right. It's a lot of verses. We ain't gonna go, we're not going to go through all of them today, but I want to give you a, 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 a great picture of where Jesus is at and how we can use this for our um, mission to become great disciples and disciple this lost world, okay? I'm going to read from the NLT version. And uh, yeah, and you can definitely see it on the King James Version. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start at verse 1. All right. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, John being John the Baptist. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tried and Jesus tired from the long walk because he remember he's coming from uh, he's trying to get to Galilee and he's going through Samaria, uh, Samaria. So it's a long walk. He sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at that time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Our key verse today says, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you will ask me and I will give you living water. Okay. Verse 11, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. You don't have the tools to get the water. <laughs> and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? The lady asks uh, Jesus. And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? I can't stop. Let's keep going. 13 says, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again but those who drank the water i give would never be thirsty again it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them giving them eternal life verse 15 said please sir the woman says give me this water now now <laughs> she, she <laughs> jesus thank you now she like all right give me this <laughs> forget you ain't got no tools Remember, she said he had no tool, no bucket, but now she's saying, give it to him. I don't know how he's going to give it to you, a tool, the bucket. Verse, 15, uh, verse 16, he says, go and get your husband. Jesus told her, uh, verse 17, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you are absolutely right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. So that's what you said. You're right. You're absolutely right. Verse 19, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So, <laughs> so I guess it's a secret. <laughs> only, only, only Jesus would know, only a prophet would know her secret, right? Uh, so tell me, why is it that you, you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship while we Samaritans claim is here at Mount uh, Gerim where our ancestors worship? So now she don't switch the subject on him. <laughs> he was talking about her husband. Now she's like, nah, all right, all right, enough of that. <laughs> why y'all why y'all worship somewhere else? The, I'm telling you, there's some good stories in the Bible, y'all. I'm telling you. Verse 21. Then Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him, for salvation come through the Jews. Jews, But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, 
when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth the father is looking for those who will worship him that way for god is spirit so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth i'm almost there the woman said i know the messiah is coming the one who called christ when he comes he will explain everything to us then jesus told her i am the messiah verse 27 just then his disciples came back so now they didn't brought the food they were shocked to find him talking to a woman but none of them had the nerve to ask what to you i mean what do you want with her or why are you talking to her the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone i said i wasn't gonna stop but this is a key point what did she go to the well for who said he could give well i'm just told you Jesus said he can give her what? Living water to where she don't need what kind of water? A physical water, right? So Jesus says, I'm going to give you living water. She's talking about, all right, how? How you going to give it to me? He tell her all her business. And all of a sudden, she leave a pot in the bucket to get the physical water because she has received the living water at that point. Because she no longer need nothing. She just left. She left all that. That is a good point to remember. She came there for something, got something else, and left. And then this is what she did when she left. Uh, the woman left her. Okay, verse 29. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people she's talking to in verse 30 says, so the people came streaming from the village to see him. I got to see who you talking about. All right. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. Jesus is like, hey, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Verse 33, did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other, and Jesus, he's so smart. He says, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are, are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. It's er the church say discipleship. Discipleship, there we go. What joy waits both the planter and the harvester alike? Verse 37, you know the saying, one plants, and another harvest and it is true i sent you 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 myself and everybody online i sent you to harvest for it's already ready the fields are ready right for harvest the harvesters are paid good wages I'll go, go to verse 37. You know the saying, one plants another harvest, and it's true, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get the, to gather the harvest. So I'm going to send you to a place where you don't have to work. You just have to get it. I've done everything. You just got to get it. So then verse 39, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman has said, check this out, many Samaritans from the village believe in a Jew because the woman has said he told me everything I did when they came out to see him they begged him to stay in their village so he stayed for two days long enough for many more to hear his message and believe so the woman who went to the well for water ended up leaving to go tell people about the Messiah that she met. So they came to hear about this Messiah. And this man was speaking so good. They say, hey, stay two more days. Stay. For two days he stayed preaching his message. <laughs> Verse 42. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because of what we have heard ourselves, now we know that he is indeed the savior of this world. All of that describes what discipleship is. 
this woman encounters Christ, not on purpose, not because it was church service that day, not because it was Bible study, not because it was a planned conference or a revival. She was actually going to meet a physical need that she had, water. She was going to meet a physical need. That's like us going to Walmart or going to the bank or going out to eat. You were going somewhere and you went there and all of a sudden you meet this individual who tells you about Christ. And then you went there for groceries and be like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on, I'll be right back. Man, got on your phone, hey y'all, I, I know we been talking about other stuff and going through this and dealing with this, but I just heard the most best message I can ever think of in my life. Come to me to Jules Osco real quick, just come. They got a sale, but just come. And you get there, that person is there, and the people that you told about, that individual that's sharing that, that testimony about Christ, talks to them individuals about Christ. And they say, you know what? Now I know who Christ is. Hey, what church you go to? Oh, I go to Mount Calvary. When's y'all service time? 10 o'clock in the morning? I'll be there. You just did and fulfilled the great request, commission that God has put us on earth to do. That simple, but we have made it so hard. We have made it so hard. We have made it so hard because we, det we and we're going to talk about this, we determine what is the way we should disciple people. We look at someone's skin color and say, because they don't look like me or sound like me or talk like me or because they just came out of prison or just because they smell this, that, and the other, mm, I'll pass on that one, right? We have been so focused on building good churches, look pretty, smell pretty, clean and polished, but yet we ain't got people in the churches. And then soon as something goes wrong in the church, we scatter. But God has never told us to do anything other than disciple and tell people about my son. Where, why did we lose that focus? Why did we lose that focus? The enemy has made it so good for us to focus on things that have nothing to do with Christ. And because of that, because we're so lost in everything else, we have lost focus on the foundation of everything that's built on Christ Jesus. And that's, that's too bad. But then I, I, th I think about Christ and what he did for us. I think about the forgiveness and the grace and mercy he gives us. The fact that we are here today to hear this message and we can now think about where we at in our personal lives and walk with Christ. And so now we can leave this place and say, you know what? Let me rededicate my life to you, Lord. Because you have been with me since day one. Let me go back out and do the great work. Let me share Christ with someone, regardless if they come in this building or not. Regardless if they come to bid or not, they just watch it online. It doesn't matter. Christ is not just in the church. He is outside. This world is created by him. We were discovered in the scriptures. But Mount Calvary, the purpose of this series is for us to get back into doing that. Because until then, that's what we're here to do. We discovered that our purpose is to conform to the image of Christ. And then whatever we do outside of that is because we conform to the image of Christ. If we want the building of Mount Calvary to have souls in Mount Calvary, then we, the people of Mount Calvary, need to go out into this world and disciple the lost. Disciple those who are mm, in between, oh, I don't know if I want to do this or not. Disciple the ones who have been hurt by the church. Amen? Amen. That's, that's the point of this whole series. And, and the reason why it's so, so strong in my heart is because we find our place at a crossroad. And if we focus on all that happened to get us to the crossroad, we will miss out on the people that are left stranded without anyone to help them know who Christ is. That's what you're here to do. If you don't do anything else, just to let people know who Christ is is a beautiful thing. 
And God wants us to do that. So I pray that as everybody in this church that we focus on doing it. So kingdom principles. You are, I'm always share kingdom principles. All right. These are standards, biblical standards that we find in the word. Discipleship is about using your personal life experience with Christ to encourage and lead people to meet Christ, believe in Christ, follow Christ, and share Christ with others. So your whole discipleship, what you do outside of growing in Christ yourself, studying and growing in your areas of weakness, is for you to return, share Christ, encourage others to follow Christ so that they can do the same thing you just did to them. Okay? We, we, you read in the first verse of, of four, uh, the Pharisees worried about how many <laughs> the disciples that Jesus got based off of what John the Baptist did. They worried about the wrong thing. And, and Jesus said he didn't baptize none of them. His disciples did. That's leadership. I give you, I don't hold the authority. I give it to you and allow you to use it. And you do the same thing for somebody else. That's influence. Right? So all of us in this room, if you influence one person, that person influenced somebody, you have touched two lives just by touching the one life. Imagine how this church would be full. We wouldn't have to worry. We'd be <laughs> back in the day over in, in, in Old Faithful, you used to put the chairs on the side. It was just not enough room. Right? You, you can build your church by building other people. We don't have to, we don't have to build a new church for people to come. We got to build our, our capacity to lead people to Christ. And that's what we're going to see in, the, in these verses. Discipleship is not recalling the sin or shortcomings of other people. It's love in action. It's grace in action. It's to remember your journey to discovering Christ in your life. So when people return to the church from not being here a while, don't remind them of how long they were not here. Don't remind them about the church protocols. Don't remind them about what happened and how we got to this point. Just love them. Our time of discipleship has nothing to do with why they ain't been in church for us, well, however long they have. Why they out here smoking and drinking and having sex and this, that, and the other. It, that ain't your business. That ain't your business. Discipleship has nothing. It, it, there's no requirement to say, hey, because you did this, let me disciple you. No. Let me love on you. Yes, sir. Thank you for using the mic. Please use the mic today because it, it will help our, our online uh, well, listeners. We, we've got so far into thinking we can change people. And, and that's not the job Christ has us to do. He said, bring them to me Absolutely. so that I can change them. Absolutely. But we get so caught up in what we can do for somebody. And if they don't do because I've been in the church so long, and if you don't do this, then... Christ not going to hear from you. That, that's not what the Bible says. It says, bring them to me so that I can change them. Absolutely. That's what the, this is what the Bible's for. He didn't tell us to be the Bible. He said, read the Bible, study the Bible, use the Bible, not be the Bible. All right? Our job is to get people to Christ. That is, that's it. <laughs> Let me get you to the person that could change your life because he has changed minds. And I'm still growing and becoming better, so you ain't alone. You're not going to figure this out in one day. But if you do, go write a book about it. <laughs> Help some people, because I'm telling you, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a daily walk, okay? All right, discipleship is getting people to follow Christ, not you or this church. I'm going to say that again. Discipleship is about people following Christ, Amen. not you, and now Mount Calvary. Yeah. We want to create the church where people want to be members of so that they can grow and be a part of the ministry, serve, using their gifts to serve others and using their expertise and fields that we can use to benefit the, the ministry of Mount Calvary for equipping people to become like Christ. But we don't disciple people just so they can be members here. We disciple people so they can know who Christ is. I like what Paul says in Corinthians. He said, y'all over here divided. Y'all over here worried about who baptized who. Paulus baptized this. Christ baptized this. I baptized you. And Paul said, mm -mm, I'm a, I baptize you, you, and you. Uh, now, that's all I know about baptizing. But it ain't about who I baptize. It ain't about who they baptize. It's about Christ. So it's not, you know, 
come be a a, a, a baptizee of Calvin works and then go to no it's about Christ because Calvin can change Calvin can flip the script okay Calvin can just decide he, hey today I just don't want to be about my father's business I am not exempt from just flipping the script one day I could be on fire and one day I just mm, that ain't it so I don't don't be baptized on Calvin words because the moment I feel like not being Calvin you struck so it's important that we lead people to Christ okay all right so let's talk about verse 10. nope nope I'm going sorry all right so so far we have read that the whole encounter that Jesus has with Samaria the Samaritan woman at the well all right so we know Jesus is traveling to Galilee through Samaria uh going through Samaria is the quickest most effective way to travel to Galilee all right now the Jews don't rock with the Samaritans they, they just don't they don't get along all right they the Jews feel like the Samaritans are or they are half breeds because they are a combination of a Jew and a Gentile so they just came together and just made one and that when you read the Old Testament, that's when you start the Assyrians and the Babylonian and they captured everybody. Like that's why it's important to read that because you understand why through salvation is through the Jews because Jews were pure. They never changed. There was another group, the Samaritans, half Gentiles, half Jews, changed the dynamics of things, Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. It's all right. We go, we'll study that stuff in seminary at Mount Carmel Mission Baptist Church one day, but it's important to understand why the Jews did not rock with the Samaritans. So the Samaritans like, since y'all don't rock with us, we're going to create our own place of worship. We're going to create our own way of doing religion. We're going to do our own thing. So them two people are at odds, okay? Um, and so the encounter, when we read verse 7 through 9, uh, Mr. Shell, uh, John 4, 7 through 9. So it says, soon... A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said no to her. I'm sorry. Soon as a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Verse 8, he was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. This woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with, Samaritans, with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? <laughs> So there's some key points in that that we want to talk about in discipleship, okay? The first point is Jesus shows us two important facts about discipleship. First, love is a requirement. We can disciple people to Christ. We cannot disciple people to Christ. We hate. If you don't like somebody, you cannot disciple them to Christ because Christ is love. And even if you do hate them, you're not even going to spend time to even talk to them to get to know them or see how they're feeling. You're just going to walk past them. You ain't going to have nothing to do with them. That's not discipleship. Jesus by by historic nature is a jew and he's coming to the samaritan woman he could have literally sat in that well and waited for disciples to come and had no business dealing with her he could just sat there and say i'm just gonna wait don't say nothing to it don't talk but jesus gives us the example because he is our model right of what to do when you are deciding people you do not look at race you do not look at a person's belief to determine if you want to disciple them to christ or not because it's not about their skin color or who they believe in, it's about them getting to know who Christ is so Christ can change all of that, all right? So that's the most important part when you come to discipleship, all right? The second was he was humble. Once again, Jesus has been walking in them sandals all day. He is tired, he is human, and he was thirsty. The lady pointed out he did not have the tools he needed to get the water. So instead of him being prideful, he said, hey, can you give me some water? Now, let's go back to this. Once again, the Jews do not rock with the Samaritans. Jesus' disciples then went on and got some food. Jesus could have sat there on a well and just, just waited till one of his disciples came with a bucket and a rope. But he decided to encounter this woman. And I believe through scripture that this was a divine moment. This wasn't just some random act this was divine and i'm glad it's divine because it shows us how intentional he was of doing the father's work which was sharing himself to others so we have to be that intentional it will be lovely that we have a divide a diverse church all right 
it'll be lovely that we have all types of people in this church. It will be lovely because there are different perspectives that we can learn from and use to help the ministry to move forward. The bot that Jesus is known as the head of the body. It does like there's fingers, there's toenails, there's toes, there's kneecaps, old kneecaps, new kneecaps, elbows, hip replacements, no hip replacements. It's full of everything. And the church should look just like the body. Yeah, that's quiet. Y'all don't, don't agree with that? I understand if you feel that way, but I'm telling you, any church that is diverse can move a lot, a lot forward, a lot faster forward than a church single-handed just with one group of people. It, 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 it can. You go work for these factories, CSL, it ain't all black folks. It ain't all white folks. Boy, it's a whole mixture of everybody because CSL got a mission and vision to make that money and they need everybody to pay a part. All right. And if CSL understands that, the church understands as well. It should be diverse. Christ did not die for just one selective group. And Jesus shows us that he's going to break the barrier between Jew and Samaritan. Israelite and Gentile. Everybody's a part. OK, so. Then the second point we read in verse 10, where he says, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you will ask me and I will give you living water. All right. So what does that mean? Jesus says, there's a gift for being with me. Bless you. He says, if you knew he was talking to you, you would know who was able to give you the living water and the living water represents something. So what are these three things that we need to understand so that we can disciple better? If you don't mind, if you have your Bibles on a, on a on TV screen, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And I'm going to read these in the King James Version when they're on the screen. Acts 2, verse 38. No, no. Okay. All right. All right. I'm reading the NLT version. Oh, there we go. To uh, Acts 2 38. How y'all doing so far? Is this good? Any questions? Any comments? Criticisms right now? Okay. All right. Acts 2 38. Go back one verse for me. There we go. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is the gift? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, if you knew who was asking you for water, he would give you the gift of God. He, you would know who you're talking to, and you have living water. So we know the gift of God is what? The Holy Spirit. All right? Now, we are a Baptist church, and we don't do too much speaking in tongues in the Baptist church. We don't do too much of laying hands and prophecy. Mm, that ain't our forte in the Baptist church. However, that is part of the Holy Spirit. All right? But what we have talked about before is the Holy Spirit is, the, our, is our power to no longer live as a captured slave in sin up by the law, but to be free in Christ Jesus. So you have a car, say you have a car and you have no gas. Where are you going? You, you, hopefully you can get the gas station. Somebody got to tell you the gas station, right? But if you ain't got, the, if you ain't got, what is it? What is it uh, a, a, triple A? If you ain't got insurance, you struck. So you a car just, just, and you a brand new car at that, just nice, just real nice, like a navy blue Cadillac that I know somebody got, I believe. <laughs> just nice, shiny and nice, right? And you ain't got no gas. You ain't going nowhere. That's the same as being a saved individual without the Holy Spirit. You ain't living for nothing. You're going to still go back to how uh, if I work this job, these, I got to get 60 hours this week. 
if I do overtime this week, then I call my auntie for this, I had enough money to get through. Right? That's that's living out the Holy Spirit. Living with the Holy Spirit is you resting and peaceful. You have no worries or no concerns. You are operating in a way that you could never do on your own because the Holy Spirit is the power that you are missing. That's why many people have salvation and are still living miserable. They come to church hoping to get something new. Lord, please answer my prayers. And then they feel like he ain't answering their prayers because they're like, they're like wait, maybe, it, it's, maybe it's not good for me to have this. Maybe the job I've been praying for ain't. No, you ain't led by nothing because ain't nothing in you. The Holy Spirit job is to lead you. It's to talk to you in the words that he hears Christ so he can tell you. So because you don't have the Holy Spirit operating in you or upon you, you are leading yourself. And when we lead ourselves, I don't give a care how many degrees you have. I don't give a care how old you are. I don't give a care what you know, what's in your savings account, how, how good you set up. You are limited to that because that is your source. But when Christ is your source and he has given you his power, which is the Holy Spirit, not only can you be the brand new Cadillac driving, but you can drive as far as you want to go. Because it's not you leading yourself, it's the Holy Spirit. So many of us are living lives that are defeated. I was one of them. Defeated. Trying to count this, trying to, if I get this job, oh, if I get this job. So I'm praying hard, Lord, I'm praying for this job right here. <laughs> and God like, mm-mm. Because you, in your mind, think that this money and this job is your source. I want you to live a life of purpose. So whatever it is, is that I have designed you to do, when you pray for that, it comes to you. Now you being fruitful, it's just coming. People calling you, hey, can you do this for me? <laughs> I sure can. That's the life Christ wants for us. That's the life of peace and rest. The old system makes us work. But Jesus made it to where you don't got to work. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Matter of fact, that same verse says the harvest is God. So I believe he's saying my provision is made to where I send you. But you can't get there without the Holy Spirit. Which is why Jesus had an encounter with the woman at the well, not only for her sake, but all those Samaritans that came. And for us today, reading about how we can be better disciples in the world we live in. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, Deacon Shell, Romans 8, verses 1 through 17. We, we're still talking about the gift of God. I, I need us to, like, this, this is a short study of the Holy Spirit, but that, listen. It, <laughs> we cannot just leave the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit is our power. You have to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. It has to be upon you. It really has to be upon you. Before Jesus went to fast, matter of fact, before he went to fast, he got baptized. When he got baptized, God coming in, oh, this is my son. Then it says he was filled, the Holy Spirit was upon him, and then he went into the wilderness, fasted. He couldn't have got through those 40 days without that Holy Spirit. And we think we're going to get through one day with the ability to eat, with the money to buy the food we want. And we think we're going to get through. Man, please. I'm ready. Romans 8. Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Go to verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Thank God for that. Verse three, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Let me break that down real quick. God was like, here, the law can only tell you that you're speeding fast, but it's not going to help you to stop speeding fast. It's gonna tell you speeding fast, you get a ticket. So Jesus had to come on earth because he had to be in a human form. 
legally he had to be in a human form to break the curse that Adam gave us. Follow with me. Adam ate the fruit, sin came into the world. God created covenants with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob to get us to be in the right relationship, to have all the things that we need, but man just couldn't do it. God said, I already know I was going to take care of it to begin with, so I'm going to send myself in flesh, and I'm going to be the Adam. Christ is going to become the Adam so that everything that Adam gave us, Christ is going to give us opposite of that. So he had to come on earth to do that, but he had to come as a human because legally he wouldn't have the authority to do anything outside of a human body because of God told us to let them have dominion over the earth. That's in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, if you don't believe me. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, five, four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not at the flesh, but after the spirit. Five, for they that are after the flesh do think about the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Okay. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That word peace means rest. To focus on spiritual matters is to have life, everything you need to survive on this earth, and the peace that comes with it. Peace means you don't have to focus and worry about how you're going to maintain your life here on earth because you have rest because you focus on spiritual things. If you focus on what's worldly, you're going to get the stress that comes with worldly thoughts. When you focus on Christ Jesus, where he is, knowing that one day this is all going to be gone and we're going to be in a place seeing God as he truly. And I can't wait to see that because I, I really want to know what color God is. Like, I really want to know <laughs> like what color is he? <laughs> right? like, we're going to be able to see him for who he is. We're going to be able to see Christ for who he is. We're going to be able to see the Holy Spirit, all our loved ones. We're going to see this new heaven that we're going to be. Man, I ain't never seen real gold. Can't wait to see that. And all these matches that everybody got, all everything, we're going to be able to see that and be who God created us in the beginning. Never dying, never sick, never sad, never angry, happy, praising God for who he is. To finally get to a place to see that all the stuff that we've been going through, to finally get to the place where, man, whoo, I'm seeing y'all at my funeral just like, man, y'all, wait till y'all get up here. You say it now, but wait till you get up here to finally get there to see that all that we've been doing is really real. That is like it is that is no joke. It is God in heaven, Jesus, everything he said is real to finally get there. That's what our mind needs to be on. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though it seem hard, yet will I trust him. Though some things have happened here at this church, yet I will trust him. Though I just got laid off, yet I will trust him. Though some stuff going on in my own house, my own life, I'm going to trust him because he said, my hope, my expectation is that I'm going to be with him. Because he lives, I will live. That's, that's where your heart should be at. Would it be nice to have a couple more dollars? Absolutely. Would it be nice to go on some trips? Mm, absolutely. Would it be nice to be able to do things you ain't been able to do? Absolutely. But there is nothing, and I mean there is absolutely nothing better to seeing God for what he have told us he is. To find all this work of not slapping somebody because they done said something, to turn your other cheek, to, to, to commit yourself to every biblical teach you have heard, to finally do all of that, them paid your $10,000 and your family fighting over the rest of the money and buried yourself and to finally get to the place that you've been praying that is real and, and is there, ain't nothing better. Ain't nothing better. And I ain't saying I'm trying to go tomorrow, but I ain't lying to you. I owe Sally May too much money. <laughs> I could go. Sally, you figure it out. Sally, you figure it out. Let's continue on with the verses. <laughs> 
Seven, uh, go, go to eight. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't please God in your flesh. None. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ now. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So this is important to have the Holy Spirit because you can't consider yourself a be Christ if you ain't got the Holy Spirit. That's your bloodline to be adopted into the family. Go to 10. And if Christ be in you, your body, this right here, is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Go to 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Go to 12. I'm sorry, y'all. It's, it's, it's just too many good verses. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You need the spirit. 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage <laughs> again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 16, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The spirit itself connects with our spirit inside of us to let us know we are children of God. Verse 17, and if children, then hears, hears of God and joint hears with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You cannot operate on this earth without the Holy Spirit. You not even peak, you not even hitting on anything until you got the Holy Spirit. And, and, and sometimes it's like you, this is not a bragging moment. But I used to hear like pastors and they'd be up and they'd be preaching and teaching whatever. And then they'd be like, and the scripture here, and they'd tell you to go to that scripture. And I'm like, man, I can't remember one scripture. How you remember all those scriptures? Like they just pop up in their head. So I'm sitting there like, well, I guess I, I, I guess I ain't that type of person. God don't love me enough to let me remember scriptures, right? That's just the thing. But then when you really start operating the spirit, you really don't, it's not you and your intellectual ability. It's really the spirit. To, 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 you'll be driving and halfway sleeping, and I just some just tell you do something. That ain't got nothing to do with you. That's the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, and so, to <laughs> to live on this earth, to deal with surviving the pandemic, to deal with gas being ten dollars and ninety eight cents a gallon. <laughs> I went to go buy ground. I don't even eat ground beef no more. And I really wasn't buying ground beef when I saw the price of ground beef the other day. I said, oh, no. I don't know what they got in that cow, but I forget that burger. <laughs> uh, I mean, good God almighty, right? And, and, and to live in a place where, where, where you <laughs> fast food ain't fast food no more. Right. I sat in line at McDonald's for a four-piece nugget meal for Zion for at least an hour. Like, what was y'all getting? <laughs> like... It just stuff has changed. Yeah. Stuff has changed. Then you work at places where um, diversity and inclusion is so important, and, and it is. So I'm not going. I'm not going to say it's not. But you are. You have to uh, abide by policies that you don't believe in, just so that you can make enough money to pay your mortgage, your car note, whatever. Like you got all this going on. It's a fool. It's a foolish thing to live his life on this earth, knowing Christ for who he is, knowing that God is the creator of all things, to never experience what it's like to have the Holy Spirit in your life. That is foolish. And we don't talk about enough in church. We don't talk about enough church because prosperity is more important. Name and claim is more important. You can't name nothing about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Think about this. Adam in the garden named every animal that came to him. You think he was just sitting here like, I ain't never seen a, a tarantula. That's a tarantula. That's a cheetah. No, that was the Holy Spirit. All right. That's why when he got caught, the first thing he could do is, I got me go hide and go run. <laughs> he didn't even know to call a, a leaf to cover me clothes. <laughs> he, he ain't had enough nerve to do that. That sucker ran in the head. 
So all that he knew was gone and had to defend for himself. And instead of saying, Father, help me, that sucker head. Ain't have sense enough to say, help me, Lord. I have made a mistake. No. <laughs> then, then he go and say, the woman you gave me, now it's your fault. All that he had left him the moment he ate that fruit. Jesus brought it back to us. Why are we living life without the Holy Spirit? Why are we carrying on our lives without the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is real. It is real. He is real. You are so empty without the Holy Spirit. So empty. Uh, man, all right, I'm sorry, y'all. Let's finish this. Um, I know I'm gonna get this done. Uh, let's go to, who is Christ? Let's go to Colossians 1, 15 and 23. We're going to go home. The, the daylight kind of confused me. You think you got more time. But it's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Colossians 1, 15. Who is the image of the indivisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Who is that? Go to 16. For by him we, I mean, we're all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. And he is the head of the body, the church. Mount Calvary, Christ is the head of the body of this church. <laughs> Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. That he that we're talking about is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Everything is on the foundation of who Christ is. All right? That's what he told the lady at the well. If you know who you're talking to, you would know I'm Christ. I can give you the gift by believing in me, and I, and I am the person that can do it. Then he says, and you have assets to live in water. Let's go to uh, John 3.16. John three sixteen. I don't. I want. I want to finish this so we can work on the next session. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus told the lady at the well, "I am the individual who has the ability to give you water that you will never be thirsty again for." I have the gift, the ability to give the gift that God has for, which is the Holy Spirit, through me. And that Holy Spirit would give you the ability to live life in a life that you have never experienced before. Not on your own no more. Not the woman that had five husbands, but the woman who was free and who was now a new creation. Okay? All things are past, no longer condemned. That's the Christ we have learned ourselves. And if you have met that Christ and you have received the Holy Spirit, you need to let other people know that, especially the ones that don't like you, because them the ones that need Christ. You could be like, "Hey, you won't you won't dislike me no more when you know Christ." Now I got to worry about you hating on me. I I can worry about you loving me, and then we can go work on some other people. All right. So I'm gonna end it like this. I'm gonna conclude like this. Man, it was. Whew. <laughs> Conclusion is this: put all this together, discipleship is leading leading is impacting influencing people adding value to people to follow christ you cannot lead people if you cannot add value to them that means you, if you're not making a difference in their lives they're not going to see you as someone they would want to follow leadership is about impacting others okay um jesus showed us when with the encounterment at the with the woman that love is a requirement you have to love people and not just the people that look like you, talk like you, think like you, act like you, all people. Jesus showed us that. He also showed us that race and belief has nothing to do with you leading people to Christ. All right? It has nothing to do with that. Three, we are sharing Jesus so people can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and know Christ in order to live a better life. There are many people struggling in life 
because they don't have the Holy Spirit and don't really know who Christ is. Religion has re, religion has done a great job of keeping us isolated from what really is true, the kingdom of God. That's that's all it's all about. His authority, his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He has made you, you, you and me to do the work here on earth. But we have allowed ourselves to get caught up in a, in a world that is going to die. It's cursed. And we don't know who Christ is enough to even have a better lives ourselves and to share with others. So your assignment for next week is to read these verses, John 4, verses 11 through 42. Read them again. Read them again. Study them again. Look at it in a way from your lens. I want you to talk. I want to talk about it. I don't want to sit here and talk all day. I want to talk about it, right? Because remember, we decided today that all of us online and here are going to be kingdom leaders to go disciple this world. We're going to continue doing that. So study so you know how to do it. Number two, go disciple someone this week. Go disciple. We found out disciple is all it is. It's encouraging and helping someone follow Christ Jesus. Go plant a seed and let God get the increase. Amen? Amen. Really pray about, ask God to give you the Holy Spirit, to guide you and lead you to someone that you can speak to about Christ. I don't give a care where you at. And I'm looking forward to hearing the stories next week. Amen? Amen. Father God, we are giving you all the glory and honor for this Bible study today. Um, this hour went by real quick, but I pray that was said was said enough to where we all are encouraged, empowered, equipped to go out uh, through the Holy Spirit to guide people to you, Lord. We just thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for that we have committed ourselves to rededicate our lives to knowing Christ and to make Christ better known. Lord, we love you for just allowing us to be in a place where we can see ourselves as you see us so that we can begin to love ourselves enough to want to grow closer to you. I pray through these, these days of study and these days of witnessing that we in, encounter people that need to know you, Father, that need to receive you in a way that their lives can be changed forever. And I pray, Lord, until you send the shepherd to this place, that we all are in the mind of focus of being kingdom leaders to use the word that you have given us to elevate ourselves in our own personal lives and to share with others uh, what we know and what we have known through Christ Jesus. I ask now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit fall fresh upon us individually, empowering us to live the life that you have created us to live, to do what you have called us to do, to have dominion over the works of your hand, to live with empowering uh, abilities to help and heal, to set free, to let the blind see, the uh, deaf to hear. Lord, we are asking you to let the miracles follow the spirit that you have put inside of us for your glory so people know through a pandemic, through high gas prices, through no jobs, whatever the case may be, that you are the most high God, that you still have power in your hand, that even in a desert place, we can still blossom and cherish and, and have great life. And we believe this not because of uh, the things that we have heard, but the things that we have read through your word, because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And we have heard it today. So let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, this church says, amen. amen. All right. I'm believing, but I'm going to ask, is there anyone here that don't know Christ? I'm trying to get my discipleship in real quick before. before. <laughs> Anyone here, anyone online, if you're online, I can't see you right now, but I praise God, I thank God for you being online with us. If you do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I commend that you get to know him. Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church is a place where you can come to know who Christ is. And we have a lot of disciples here who are ready to show you love and to commit themselves to equipping you to better know who Christ is. Christ is ultimately our Messiah. He has helped us to be free. And now because of Christ Jesus, we now have the Holy Spirit who allows us to live freely on this earth. So we just thank God for you. If you want to leave a comment, if you want to call the number, I do not know the number by heart, but it's a number online somewhere. Call that number. Send an email. Um, 815-937-9767. Forty-three hundred. That's the number. Eight one five nine three seven forty-three hundred. Call that number right now. 
<laughs> and we are glad to receive you in this church. If you are um, looking for another church, I know we there's 10 million churches around here. We can help you get to one. But I really believe that you was online for this day, and I pray that it was a word that helps you. With that being said, I cannot live in sin, cannot live in sin. and feel my Savior love, love. creating me, Create me a new heart, oh God. A new heart, oh God. And renew, and renew a right spirit, a right spirit within within me. Within me. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>